from a Lebanese village called Al Hirmil. Uh, and of course, I ask on everyone to visit this wonderful Lebanese area, especially because it has a river that is considered to be one of the most beautiful rivers in the country, which is Al Asi. Moreover, on its riverbanks, I witnessed a very charming childhood. Uh, I enjoyed beautiful sceneries of this village. And of course, the people that live in the village are surrounded by trees and natural scenes. Uh, they get affected by all this. It affects their personality and, to be specific, their uh, pen. When I was young, I had a hobby in writing stories and poems and also in delivering and presenting poetry about this talent and how I discovered it. Uh, when I was young, uh, of course, uh, I was seven years old, I tried to always imitate uh, Friday's uh, speakers. Uh, so uh, once uh, my dad noticed that I had a good ability in presenting like a radio announcer, so he called me and asked me to repeat. And uh, I was saying uh, I did this and he said that my presentation was awesome. After this, I studied in the school. I moved to Imam Baqir school, which is related to Al Mabarat Association. Uh, over there, they started to make several celebrations and uh, activities. So they made uh, once a kind of contest between the students of grade four, a certain poem, and who has the ability and presentation in order to make him or her the presenter of the celebrations in the school. So we stayed all together during the break, and we read all the poem. Uh, which I still remember, it's uh, onset. Nathar al Kharifu al Atharu Fatanathar al Awraq wa Tanathar al Abarat. All of us read it. So the teacher who was responsible of such kinds of activities told me to stay there. And uh, the rest of the class left. She told me that I will be the presenter of the celebration. And uh, of course, I started to be the presenter on the platform, whether in a presentation or in a certain speech sometimes. Of course, all this enriched my experience. And after that, uh, my talent developed in the domain of writing and presenting. And then it was directed to many things in this domain, but in a wider way. Considering my uh, relation with Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, uh, I would ask here all the mothers, because they have a, a really basic role. I go here to my childhood, to uh, my relationship with my mother. My mother was the biggest reason or factor that made our relationship with Ahl al-Bayt so strong. So before starting school and before joining Scouts, we used to see how uh, my mother used to act and how she used to transmit to us each religious lesson she uh, took. I mean, the lectures that used to be given to adults and that were given to uh, Scouts uh, at young ages, these lectures used to be given to us by my mother in a simpler way, like a story about uh, Imam Mahdi, Ahl al-Bayt, or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. She used to tell us uh, all these in a simple way. Uh, and like uh, this we going a beautiful... My mom uh, used to simplify them. She used to tell us stories about Ahl al-Bayt or about Imam al-Mahdi. Uh, she used to simplify these stories and give them to us in a simplified way and used to react uh, with her in a beautiful way and ask several questions. How to act, uh, where to ask. So we started interacting more about our uh, Imams and Ahl al-Bayt. And of course, we moved to an Islamic school, uh, Al-Baqir school. This helped me more and more. It affected my personality for sure and also affected my surrounding, uh, my family and my parents. And of course, uh, it gives you a strong relation with Ahl al-Bayt, especially as Sayyidah Zainab and Sayyidah Zahra and Sayyidah Zainab. And of course, uh, you will adhere to something named Al-Hijab. Uh, of course, involuntarily, so like uh, this was my start with the hijab. Uh, I want to add something uh, for the hijab because I was wearing the hijab and I wanted to wear the hijab. I like to wear it. Uh, this increased my motive. And uh, of course, uh, I asked my mother to wear the hijab and indeed I wore the hijab at the age of seven. As for uh, writing, I used to be always the best in the class. Uh, speaking of writing and composition, throughout all these years, uh, 
the teachers used to praise my writings and consider them distinguished from other writings of the students. In addition to recitation, I mean, whenever we had a poem in the class, I used to read it. Uh, whenever we had celebrations and occasions, whether in school or in scouts, like what I said before, I also was responsible of all that. Uh, of course, all this sustain yourself and confidence uh, and affect your ability and develop it. And uh, also, uh, you will focus more on your uh, inner powers in order to push it up. So uh, since uh, that time, uh, I decided to study journalism. However, the circumstance prevented me from studying this major, so I moved to the domain of history uh, temporarily. I said that later I will complete in journalism. Uh, journalism. And uh, really, that's when I continued via certain courses until I started working in Al Bashair Radio Channel, and then I moved to other media institutions, whether radio channel or television channel. My first trial on writing about Ahl al Bayt, peace be upon them, was a piece of poem when I was about 10 years old. Uh, it was about Imam al-Baqir, peace be upon him. And that's uh, because our district was named Imam Baqir district. And also because the available anthems that tie about Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, were few. And especially those about Imam Ali and Prophet uh, Muhammad. However, about uh, other Imams, they were rare. So that thing used to bother me a lot, especially in our celebrations in which you like to say an anthem or other similar things in a certain occasion. So I remember that I wrote a piece of poem, uh, which was uh, simple words. And of course, according to my young age, it made its uh, melodies. And then I sang it with a group of friends in the scouts and the occasion of Imam Baqir's uh, birth. being a journalist is not an easy mission and it needs several basic factors and we all know that each work whether small or big if you don't have your own ambition the motive and the faith uh, that will transform after a period of time to uh, to becoming a trail of of the person uh, i mean you won't be able to succeed then and even with a temporary success however if you want your success permanent and if you want to taste your success and feel it, uh, you should take care of the relationship with Allah, uh, glorified and exalted be He. You should know your limits and your duties, your your rights and your relationship with Ahl al-Bayt. It should be strengthened. So it's not important to just read about Ahl al-Bayt. You should know, for example, why Sayyidah Zainab, peace be upon her, stood in front of Yazid, why she defended Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Why she tried as hard as she can to transmit Imam Hussein's revolution and etc. Uh, all that was to approve the justice and to deny the falsehood, to clarify that image all over the years as a flower which will blossom out each year. She, uh, so based on all this, each step you take should be an act of balance. Uh, of course, uh, it should all assist Islam and it should all be uh, to motivate your religion towards the better and of course you should know which path to take and of course that should take you on the right path of Allah as well. Of course uh, I work in several media institutions and all of them are uh, if Allah wills uh, Islamic uh, well-balanced disciplines etc and like this I surely know the places in which I work in and I know also uh, why I went to such channels so when you are given a certain place whether in a television program or radio program as a composer or as a presenter or on another program like a poem or any other things when you are given such things you are receiving then a trust and a reliance in which you should know how to deal with it because we all know that each pos position each work or each child we are responsible of them uh, in front of Allah. So, uh, for example, talking about the programs that I presented for children and uh, adults, especially those of children, I know that I have a specific uh, time, uh, of course, a specific timeline in which I should transmit my messages during this time, regardless of the way uh, I may use, whether directly or not. But all I realize is that this time is like trust 
in which I should transmit several messages to these children or adults that are sure related to our life because we know that media transforms with time to become ideal, especially for children. When you are uh, a child, you keep close to the character and he or she communicates with it, whether via radio or television, that I repeat again that you are responsible of this time, of how you are presenting and what's the subject you are presenting. Uh, Islam is a school. It's uh, a rich, it's rich in lessons. When I want to write a story, to write an anthem, to prepare a certain program, I directly go to the stories of Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, who their history is full of beneficial lessons. So the simplest thing may be is when you want to talk about how to deal with others, how to act with people without hurting their uh, feeling. So here you want to talk about how to deal with others, how to act with people without hurting their feelings. So here you should really pass through the story of the Imams, peace be upon them. When they taught the old man how to perform ablution without hurting his feelings. Or when Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, fasted three days in order to feed the poor, for example. All these stories you can talk about and the importance of the mechanism that you use by presenting that certain story. Because some children uh, heard the similar story before. So your role or your turn is to make the story firm in his mind. Here I mention on this issue, uh, which is the debate of the child, it's very important to react with him or her and also use the interactional programs during the lifetime. And here you won't be able and you won't be the presenter only. Uh, you will be the child's recipient. However, you'll react with each other. You'll hear his or her ideas and also listen to her problems. Then through all this, you'll be able to know and relate between what's happening with this child and what you want to transmit through your program. I want to, uh, of course, over here, go back to uh, the being a journalist and how it becomes ideal to the child and here's there's a big responsibility and i want to talk about and go back to ahl al-bayt peace be upon them who told us that we should go back to being their advocates without our own tongues or words i mean i should think about being a person who shows my actions uh, through my media devices and which is an image that i can transmit to people or show it to people because the individual starts from his own self and he who doesn't have the things that uh, cannot give them well that's a problem so when i transmit morals to children and in my daily life i don't own these morals or i don't apply them outside the domain of my work i mean if they see me in a positive image when i'm not in my, in my work how i destroy everything i present and i deform each concept i give to them and i uh, lose their trust and that's a thing that we should focus on transmitting and applying what i transmit in my daily life this is the second point uh, i i relate the subject of course, and I have to have the honor to relating the subject and to be precise about it. Uh, that differs from, of course, adults and children. So we should be accurate and able to not do, of course, anything opposite to what we say. Because the worst thing is to be careless and say that this is such a, a subject for a show. No, we are responsible in front of Allah. Of course, uh, such as that of the uh, Israelis, who want to deform the image of our Prophet, peace be upon him. The same thing about uh, Sira of Ashura, in which they added to it a lot of uh, hyperbole in order to give offense to it and to show that it is just a legend. And this is where the, the importance of it lies, the importance of the incident, because this latter, by it is rich in lessons and morals, like what we said, and also rich in incidents that may make the one cry. Uh, so the accuracy is a very important thing. But also you should make use of something called smartness uh, in presenting a sadrit, if I may say, because the sira is, is one. But your smartness in how you transmit it, that's where it differs. Uh, I mean, you should use the style of excitation or inspiration and talking, for example, about a story, uh, a drawing, a color, uh, acting, uh, the people who will participate in this work, the teamwork, etc. All these together are considered as complementary factors to present a successful work for hearers or uh, recipients. <laughs>
debates rules and their uh, siras, if we apply them surely, they will make us live a very happy life because they reach the perfectness that we always yearn to achieve. In our daily life, there are a lot of problems and mistakes. Uh, maybe some of our mistakes are done unpurposely or because we are ignorant in certain things sometimes and some other mistakes are because of carelessness, uh, unconsideredness or even on purpose if we can uh, also say so. From uh, here, uh, your mission when you want to transmit your message is affected by your way or the technique you use to do this. Uh, as for me, I write criticism, social and sometimes comedy programs. Why do I write comedy uh, programs? Because people like this kind of programs due to the bad psychological situation of people nowadays, I mean, you shouldn't be so strict with them. You shouldn't give them the lessons in a way of demanding this and that because they will dislike this directly. But when you give them the advice in the way that they like or in a funny way, even if they uh, laugh, the lesson or the moral will fix in their minds willingly. Uh, and sure, I depend on a lot of my works, whether in anthems or in programs, on the indirect method in order to transmit the idea in an expected way that comes opposite to the expectation. And I feel that this thing affects people a lot, and I really hear uh, sometimes their praise and their positive reactions towards my work. Uh, so basically, I mean, I hear a lot of praising. Uh, I wrote a lot of comedy programs. I actually wrote uh, Wise Talks, Wise Listens, and thanks to Allah, because of it, I gained a lot of success. And uh, that's why I made a second part of it. Then we made uh, O Ramadan, in which we shed light on some mistakes that people do in Ramadan. And after uh, we made uh, O Life, which is of two parts as well. And the last criticism, a social and comedy program, was Ramadan and Shaban's family which was uh, shown in the previous uh, Ramadan. It got a huge success and was from the several uh, works which participated in Al-Ghadir festival. Uh, it was uh, so successful that I got an award for the best television dramatic program. Hijab is a garnish for the women and we are highly convinced with this fact and everything I look at, all the scenes around me, increase my conviction more and more. If we look at our world, we see a lot of women who rose on the ladder of success with a great confidence. A lot of women such as writers, uh, poets, painters, doctors, scientists, uh, and of course so on. On all these different uh, domains, these women progressed and rose by their hijab. And here I should shed light on a significant point, which is that hijab isn't a block. It's not a barrier. This hijab doesn't hinder me but vice versa. Maybe some girls consider hijab as a thing that may accept them. However, I assure that the relationship with Allah, satisfying Allah, obeying His rules, and avoiding His prohibitions makes life better. And we know that hijab is a duty from Allah, so we should trust that this hijab will bring to us the calmness and serenity because we satisfied Allah and obeyed His orders. Thus, this will make you gain firmness, peace, and also will ease all your life issues and matters definitely it will actually embed peace in your heart uh, uh, I want to say that I am a lesson for myself before being a lesson to teach others I mean if I didn't see a power and ability in my daughter to stand up in front of the camera I would surely prevent her from being shown on the television because I myself uh, in front of the camera and of course uh, this is done via casting, like you know, and it is made by many children, and the best is selected. I criticize people who show the wrong person because of a personal relation, and that's due to the fact that there are children who may deserve to be shown instead of my son or my daughter. And because I saw in my daughter, Nadine, the courage, the beautiful casting away, and the charisma in front of the camera, and of course, this thing is done via casting, like you know, and it is made by many children. Nadine, of course, was selected according to the committee's uh, testimony because she was distinctive and suited that place, not because she's my daughter. This is a point. Another point is that when I allowed to do this, I really, frankly, used to sit with her and talk to her about her behavior 
that she should be doing in front of others, how she should deal with her friends in a nice way and away from arrogance and pride. Because I care so much about my daughter's afterlife. I want her to be in heaven if Allah wills. Um, I used to, of course, see all these points and I used to focus on this matter and I used to, of course, note on the fact that she shouldn't be doing uh, and opposing what she says on television. Uh, she never used to say that she appears on a television or that she presents on that certain radio. However, her friends used to do this. She acted like this because she learned that she shouldn't be arrogant due to her position. This idea was fixed in her mind. Firstly, I want to say that the campaign in which I joined to go and uh, visited the holy places, uh, they treated me like a famous person because many of them saw me on uh, TV they like uh, made me feel uh, and give me a higher responsibility about how to act and how to behave. Here's the thing. I mean, here's the thing that you should transmit to your children and others. And I repeat by saying that if you don't own it, you can't give it. basing on my primitiveness and not pretending, basing on the way I raised and was raised at my place. And I'm the result of my mother's raising, which I trusted and I transmitted to my daughter. So uh, sometimes you may be obliged to leave a part of your rights and to act in a very precise way because you're a person who presents certain things on media institutions or channels or a person who has a goal that should be achieved considering visiting the holy places i mean really when i reached uh, imam ali al rida's shrine uh, i arrived there i uh, I mean, if we want to talk in details, when you reach that place in particular, you can't really describe and you can't really uh, describe how you felt and how you spoke uh, to the Imam, how you kissed the shrine. So how come if you really reach this shrine, how come and you saw it in your eyes, how come? <laughs> I mean, how can you express that? Uh, this is sure a blessing from Allah, because in our religion, reaching this stage is really a facilitation from Allah. And maybe an invitation for our imams to visit them. So here you feel that this is another responsibility because you had the honor to visit this shrine and this imam. And your return is to transmit his ideas, uh, his speech, uh, and his own lessons and, and the school uh, as well. So we have a role in that matter. You have a responsibility in transmitting the school to people. There's a responsibility. Uh, we know Ahl al-Bayt, uh, peace be upon them, uh, are, the speaking, uh, are the speakers of the Qur'an and they build their life and their way basing on this sacred book. So I made a program once named in order to be shown for them and surely taken from one of the uh, holy ayat in which I talked in it about the scientific miraculousness of the holy Qur'an. And we discussed the majesty of its ayat which talked about metaphysical things that are being studied now uh, in the Quran and are still debated and that were mentioned 1,400 years ago. Um, we shed light on a lot of discoveries achieved by the sciences but mentioned in the Quran surely 1,000 years ago. 
uh, about my program, The Scattered uh, Pearls, which I wrote to one of the channels, was like a journey in the Holy Quran of Allah, uh, glorified and exalted be He, which shed light on a lot of Quran's information, but in a very beautiful, dramatic style and method. It was so effective. I mean, a lot of viewers liked it. From here, I would like to focus uh, a lot on the role of the mother, especially in the time of the uh, soft uh, war that we are confronting. If we go back to past, we realize that children's programs were rare, and few especially, because uh, the TV channels used to open several hours in a day and close at night hours, unfortunately. So uh, basically the child we used to get just one uh, or two hours daily only. Uh, however, today there are so and so many children's programs uh, and channels and not only one and you don't know what are the subjects that are presented uh, but all what I should say that three quarters of them or more are against our morals and ethics. This is a lot of course uh, called perhaps we can say uh, poison and the honey. They present it in an attractive and nice and beautiful way in order to steal our children's minds and here I would like all mothers despite that there are a lot of of course them working and a lot of who are distracted by life's pressures and burdens to protect their children because when they strengthen him or her she or he will be able alone to evaluate and judge whether the thing and judge whether the thing he is watching is in the circle of Allah's satisfaction, even if his parents are not present, or it may bring Allah's anger. So we have to be careful of that. We have to know that that child could be able to prevent from listening or seeing things that oppose God's path, and that matter should be looked at so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't actually uh, bring his anger on us.